and this is carries a similar idea this is the probability density function all right in some books they'll just use um, f here as well okay but these two carry the same idea so first step first step apply the formula expected value of ax plus by when x and y discrete is the summation over x and y of the function this function here times the probability mass function and now we need, it's, this is an exercise in double summation. So as I said, if you're shaky on it, look at my, uh, I would hope, an excellent video on showing you how to do double summations in seven minutes. Now we can, this has got brackets here, so we can take this probability through the brackets. Let's just be clear that you're not kind of confused by the brackets here. This is saying AXI plus BYJ, in brackets, uh, this bracket is different because it's the argument, this is saying that this probability, uh, probability mass function, this function P depends on P and Y. Whereas this is just the usual brackets that we're dealing with. So what I'm saying is that we can take this P through the brackets. It's not the case that you can do AXI times XI, AXI times YJ. So in other words, it's not expanding the bracket because this bracket here is not... Uh, this is just an argu This is just telling you what the function p depends on. So taking this p through there, we have a x i times probability plus. Let's put keep the brackets right around here. So we take this through there as well. B y j. Okay. Now I'm going to shift myself to the left because I'm running out of space on the right. Usually when we're doing proofs we like to line things, it makes it easier to read. Okay, well, I've got double summation now of all this in the brackets. So what you can do is, one of the rules is, um, since summation is a linear operator, we can do it t term by term. In other words, we can take this through the brackets. First term, there. I'm going to look closely at this term here. We look at the first and second term, we can see that they're the same kind of pattern. So if we look at and study this one carefully, and I'll show you how to get the result for this one, then you can do the same for this one. But what this whole thing is going to equal to, this first term, let's show you where we're going, is that all this lot we're going to show is equal to A times the expected value of X. Okay? So once I've shown you how to do this, I'm going to leave it to you to do the same for this, to show that this one is equal to b times the expected value of y. Okay, and if you manage that, then you've understood the proof. So I'm going to look at this one carefully. Right, let's take this thing. Since I'm going to want to refer back to this later on, let's just call this a whole equation. Let's call it star. Now it's x subscript i and y subscript j, um, so which is different to. Look, I'm trying to write this i subscript i, which is a label for x i. Be careful, you don't do this like some of my students do. That's saying x times i. They're different things. Right, so I'm trying to write that. That one's not great. So let's do that. Okay. It's not. It's easier to write on the whiteboard than on the uh, on the computer. I tell you. Okay. Now, I think I'll do this uh, in two passes. First one, I'll explain it to you as succinctly as I can. Secondly, I'll do it in more detail, explaining in part the double summation. 
Okay, we can see first of all, the summation rule says this is constant, it does not depend on the x and it does not depend on the i counter, so that comes out. Now when I'm saying x here, let's actually change this, x is counting from i onwards, so i equals to 1. And for j, j is counting, uh, y is counting from j equals to 1. So however many observations there are for j, let's say there are n of them. For x, let's say there are m of them. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. m can be equal to n, but we're doing it for the general case. But don't let that distract you. Just summing then. We'll have replaced x for i because it's summing from i onwards and y is summing from j onwards. Okay, so I have this. Okay, next, I say that this counter i does not depend on counter j. So this xi can come over here. It can come in front of the summation on i. It can't come before it because it depends on i. So I can put it here. I can't take this outside it because it depends on not only i, it depends on j as well. So it must be to the right of both the summation of i and j. Then I'll observe that i equal 1 to m of xi, but what is this? Second, let's get a nicer colour. What is this thing here? That's the sum of the joint mass probability mass function over j. And what this is equal to, again another video I show you, is that this is equal to the marginal for it. In other words, this. And this gives us the result because this is by definition this whole thing is by definition expected value of x so there are two things then I want that you might need to think about this step to this step second to third line and I'm going to kind of redo this but uh, it's trying to explain a bit more about the double summation uh, this step to this step that if you sum that you're obtaining the marginal probability mass function from a joint probability mass function and again I've done a video on this where I've shown you how I do it so um, I'm not gonna let's just in a pre in another video I actually give you an example of this so here you have x y 